If you are new to video editing and you want 10 quick tips on how you can edit better and more efficiently, well, we've got you covered. And thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. To quickly and easily adjust a clip's length while keeping your timeline snug, check out the Ripple Edit Tool. Click and hold on this icon in your toolbar and select Ripple Edit Tool. To adjust the end length of a clip, move your cursor over to the right side of the clip until your icon turns yellow. Then click and drag to the right to extend the clip and watch how it will move your entire sequence to accommodate. You can also add to the beginning of the clip by going to the left side and dragging left. You can also make a ripple edit while using the selection tool by moving to the beginning or end of a clip and holding command or control. The icon will turn yellow and you can instantly make a ripple edit. It's easy, simple, and clean. I often don't need production audio for a lot of my B-roll, but if I decide I want to add it in later, I can just select the clip on my timeline and go to Sequence, Match Frame. Or to be even quicker, just move your playhead over the clip and press F on your keyboard. And it's the perfect match. Then I can click and drag the audio only down to my timeline. Also, if you shoot longer clips and want to see if there's any more footage you can pull from a particular clip on your timeline, you can quickly pull the clip up in your timeline with Match Frame and then scrub through to look for another section to pull from. Track targeting is useful for quickly navigating around your timeline in Premiere and can be useful for quickly inserting video, graphics, and audio. For instance, I often put photos in our videos, usually on a higher video track. Let's say I want to go through and add a camera shutter sound to each photo as it appears on screen. Next, I'll enable targeting only on the video track containing the photos, and then I'll toggle the targeting on for just the audio track I want the shutter sound to go on. Then I can just use the down arrow key to move my playhead to each photo, and then use Command or Control V to paste the sound at the start of each photo. It's super fast and super easy, so give it a try. Nesting clips can be a great way to clean up your timeline and keep things organized. One way you may want to use this is by nesting your A-roll clips together. In case you aren't familiar, your A-roll is this, you talking to the camera or whatever the core footage of your video consists of. What a nice view of the ocean. That's B-roll of the ocean. Or if you don't have a clip in your timeline yet, just right click it in the project window and select new sequence from clip. The idea here is to nest the A-roll before you start editing it together. Outside of the nested sequence, you can chop up your camera and make any cuts you'd like. The benefit here is when you're ready to make color grading or other effect decisions on your A-roll, you can simply open up the nest, add an adjustment layer, and start grading or adding effects. This keeps things really tidy and ensures your A-roll is getting the same color treatment across the board. When you don't nest things, you're more likely to accidentally move or cut the adjustment layer and adds an additional video layer of clutter on your timeline. You can also apply audio effects in the nest or bring in edited audio from a different application like Audition and easily line up the edited clips with the original. If you have elements you want sized and positioned the same throughout your video, try using guides to help you out. First, make sure you have your rulers and guides easily accessible in your program monitor. To do that, click the plus sign to open the button editor and drag down both icons. First, we'll enable rulers by clicking the button we just added to the program monitor. Let's say we want to add graphics throughout a talking head video, and we want every graphic to have the same bottom left position. We can create a horizontal guide by dragging down from the top ruler and placing it where we want it. And we can add a vertical guide by pulling from the left ruler. When we are ready to position our next graphic, we can click on the element we want to align, click motion in the effect controls, and then click and drag while holding command or control to have it snap to that guide. You can also turn Snap on in your program monitor by clicking the wrench and choosing Snap in program monitor. I love using these guides, so check them out. If you're ever unsure of how edit or transition is working out, you may want to watch it back a few times to get the feel for how it's flowing. This is where the play around function is helpful. I have the keyboard shortcut of Shift K, but you can also add it to your program monitor by clicking the button editor here and dragging the play around icon to your toolbar. Place your playhead at the point you want to review and click the play around button or shift K. This will play a little before and after where the playhead is located. You can also turn on loop to have it keep playing back automatically. A person who calls himself a creative is ironically putting a box around creativity. 
A person who calls himself a creative is... Finally, you can adjust the amount that it will play before and after your playhead position under Preferences Playback. Here, my pre-roll is set to three seconds and post-roll to two seconds, but you can adjust it as you see fit. After you've individually color balanced each clip in your video, you may want to add an overall LUT to give everything a more cohesive look. We'll start by creating an adjustment layer. The default settings here are fine. I'll just rename it LUT, so when we see it on our timeline, it'll be clear what it is. Since we often have graphics or photos that we don't want a LUT on, we like to leave a video track open just over our A roll, or just use the nesting technique that we talked about earlier. Let's drag the adjustment layer to this track and extend it across our entire video. Now let's head into the color workspace. With the adjustment layer selected, we'll open up the Creative tab in the Lumetri Color panel and choose LUT. You can click Browse to navigate to your own LUT, like so, or just use the ones that come built into Premiere. We can then adjust the intensity as needed, and boom, we are good to go. Who doesn't want 10% better image quality? Here's a helpful tip, especially if you're working with two different camera types. Let's say I have a lot of drone clips that I need to color balance, all shot at the same time of day and a similar subject matter. So once I've established the color grade for one of the clips, I want to apply it to all the other drone clips, but not for any of my A camera shots because those were shot with a different camera. First, I'll right click on my graded clip, select copy, then I'll go to edit, find. My drone clips all start with the prefix DJI. So I'll type that into the search box and choose find all. Now we can see all the drone clips on my timeline have been selected. I'll just hold shift and click on the clip I've already graded to deselect it. Then I'll right click on any other highlighted clip and select paste attributes. From here, I can paste my Lumetri color grade onto all the drone clips on my timeline. Easy peasy. If you've ever manually typed in captions for a video, you know it's an incredibly tedious process. Luckily, things have gotten much easier with Adobe's auto transcribe feature. Even though YouTube can automatically create captions, there are still useful reasons to transcribe in Premiere. You could easily auto-transcribe interviews, you could burn in subtitles so it's printed on the video and every viewer sees them, and if you post on multiple platforms, you can proofread and format captions once in Premiere instead of relying on each platform's auto-transcription feature. You'll likely get better results here in Premiere because you can solo the voice track so the AI doesn't have to filter out music and sound effects from other tracks. To do it, go to Sequence, Auto Transcribe Sequence, or in the text panel, Create Transcription. Once it's done analyzing the audio, you can proofread the text and make any edits you need. Then you can click Create Captions. You can also export the SRT file as well. So in just a couple of clicks, I have subtitles throughout my entire video, saving me so much time or spending the money to have it done for me. While not the most exciting topic, Setting up your metadata display in your project window can really make the editing process more streamlined. We're often working with all sorts of footage, so at a quick glance, I like to know the resolution and frame rate of a clip. Let's set up a custom display. Start by right-clicking on a column heading and choose Metadata Display. I'll start by deselecting most of these properties. Video info will show us the clip's resolution, so we want that. I also like video usage and audio usage, so I can easily see which clips I've already put into my timeline and which ones I haven't used. Once you have selected all the properties you want, click OK. You can now rearrange the order of any columns if you'd like. And once you're happy with it, click the Project Panel menu and choose Save As New View Preset. You can title it and assign it to a keyboard shortcut if you want to easily jump between different views you have set up. Click OK. The View Preset will remember your column ordering and other settings about your project panel. Now the columns only show me information that's relevant to my editing process. I immediately know the frame rate, the resolution, and whether or not I've used any of these clips yet. Another cool thing you can do is under your usage columns, click the drop down arrow next to the usage number, and it will show you the time code of where that clip is being used. Click on it to have your playhead automatically jump to that point on your timeline. This setup makes things super efficient for me, so definitely get your columns set with only the properties you need to make the most of the project window. If you've watched our videos before, you probably know that we are pretty big fans of Squarespace. We have been customers of theirs for years, long before this YouTube channel even existed, and still have our three Squarespace websites going strong. Usually we do something off the walls for our ad spots like fake our elopement to trick my mom, spoof old MTV reality shows, or do our best Peloton commercial parody. But I wanted to let you know about some new things cooking over at Squarespace. If you're a photographer looking to diversify your revenue streams, 
check out their new member areas. This allows you to sell access to gated content like video classes, digital downloads, or newsletters. Frickin' sweet. You can also showcase your photography with Squarespace's professional portfolio designs. Customize the layout, look, and feel to make it your own. Also, you can schedule and book appointments straight from your website. You need to lock in client meetings? Well, they can easily see your availability and reschedule if needed, making your life a heck of a lot easier. And if that wasn't cool enough, you can save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain when you go to squarespace.com slash mango street, or just click the link in the description. Well, that's it. We hope you learned something new. If you have a tip of your own you'd like to share, leave us a comment below and let us know. Thanks for watching. See you next time.